here, you know, but we're, but let it be known that we're still concentrating on the, the chapter, the chapter at hand. So, um, if you, if you're here, I hope you're here and you remember that question, you know, ask it, you know, we'll, uh, we'll chop it up, you know, while we're here. All right. So if you guys got your Bible and your drink <laughs> and your sandwich, or whatever, let's see what we can get from the, from the good Lord today as we trip out on the mind-blowing word of God. We're at uh, Luke 19. Let's see what we can do with it. Okay, uh, now, Yeshua entered Jericho and was passing through. And here was a man by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was rich. <laughs> okay. um, now, let's let's back up a little bit. Let's look at Jericho. Jericho itself means um, the moon. Uh, it could also it uh, it also inc it included in its meaning is also month, and also included in his meaning is his sweet smell. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> I mean, it is funny until you think about you know. You know <laughs> <laughs> when you when, when you start putting the picture to it, right? Okay, so Jericho, uh, including in its meaning when you break it down, is moon. Um, so Jericho uh, is going to be um, Palestinian. And we know how Palestinian, we're, we've got this population of Muslims. And who do they worship? Moon God, that they refer to as Allah. So kind of fitting that Jericho means moon. Um, but we also have in its meaning... Uh, his sweet smell. And before the Lord did his work on the cross, as he's trucking up that hill with that with the um, with that cross that he's going to be nailed on, he was anointed. Um, young lady uh, took some nard. Right. This stuff was some smell good back in the day. Right. This is this was this is what was hot. Right. This was hot back in the day. And, uh, you know, it was very expensive. She cracked that open. She anointed him head, his feet. So he was smelling sweet yeah. okay awesome. so uh you know what i imagine you know i mean we should, we should have a cologne you know jericho it's like jericho <laughs> for men <laughs> right like the walls of jericho come down it's like you be in the singles bar and stuff like that some girl gonna try to play all snooty with you and stuff say hey there <laughs> you mind if i buy you a drink i wouldn't give you the time of day i'm sorry what was your name again <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> the wall you can have like commercial like obsessions commercial. the walls come down with jericho Oh, for men, right? <laughs> so, you know, I mean, hey, come on, Christians. You know, we gotta have some. You know, we gotta have some stuff out there. You know, we can smell good too. That didn't, that's not a, that's that, that wouldn't be a good that wouldn't be a good market. Christians, we can smell good too. <laughs> Yikes! We'll See, that's somebody else to do the slogan. Yeah, yeah. So, so, come on. So usually you have some like good stuff. You know, some some good one liners, man. That ain't one of them. That's not one of them. Bro. <laughs> Okay, um, so now we got, so just, just something to, you know, consider. So we got under Jericho, we're getting uh, meanings, moon, month, his sweet smell. Um, also, now when we get to Zacchaeus, uh, Zacchaeus is, uh, ah, don't tell me, what is Zacchaeus? Pure. Oh, okay. That, that, you didn't know I was a ventriloquist, did you? <laughs> I was like, don't tell me, don't tell me. No. Uh, ah, yes, I reminded myself. I didn't even know, I didn't even know. <laughs> all that I can get. <laughs> okay, all right. So, pure. You know, interestingly enough, now we're talking about Zacchaeus. His name meaning pure, right? Okay, Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Okay, pure, but his name means pure. That's like calling like a like a seven foot tall dude tiny. You know, and we get cats like that. It's like you know, this hey, damn man, yeah. that bro, bro, what's your name? You know, tiny. It's like, okay, <laughs> you know, well, this dude's name is pure. All right, let's see. Uh, and he was rich. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Yeshua was, but he did, but he couldn't because of the crowd, because he was short. What's up, shorty? All right, for he was short in height, so he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see Yeshua, for he was about to pass through that way. Interesting. Okay, so. He's going to climb up into uh, the sycamore tree. The sycamore tree is in the family of, um, it's related to the fig trees. Um, so we know that figs, you know, when we think of figs, you know, that's associated with Israel. 
But the, sick of the, the strange thing about the sycamore tree is that it's not, it's, not like, it's not like an indigenous tree to Israel. It's an Egyptian tree. So now, now this ain't, you know, we, this ain't too, you know, far out there. God lets you see, you know, even today that, you know, we got, you know, trees that don't grow. Like probably where you are, you look at those trees, those trees probably don't actually grow there. Um, and, you know, people we talk about, we're cutting down all the trees. It's like, no, there's more trees in America than before America was founded. Yeah. Lots of trees. And every time, you know, when they put up a building, uh, what do they do? They surround it with trees. Yeah. You know, so, and it's not like the lumber industry wants to go and cut down. That's their livelihood. They're not going to go and squander all the trees, y'all. They're always, you know, replanting new trees to keep their business up. You don't want to cut down all the trees. So, but in this right here, this tree, this sycamore tree, this is an Egyptian tree. And we remember we was reading that, uh, you know, when, when Jesus says, if you have enough faith, you could tell this tree to get up. Go into the sea and be replanted or be planted into the sea. Well, this is another case of that. This is a tree that came up that, that was that's an Egyptian tree. And here it is, you know, in this location. It's like kind of reminds me of, you know, when God says, uh, I will call my son up out of Egypt. So we got the sycamore tree. Uh, it's in the family of the fig tree. The fig tree itself is associated with Israel, but it being a, but this tree being a family of trees means it, you can look at it as us Gentiles who are being grafted in to the Jewish family. Okay, so it's like it's all it's all it's relative, right? So now dig this. He's gonna climb up into this tree. Y'all, we want to get up into that tree. Alright? We want to get up into that tree. Get get your get your behind up into that tree so you can see Jesus. Because this tree, right? Look, we're talking about uh, uh the associations, the pictures that are being painted here. My son won't call out Egypt. The family of, uh, of, uh, of the Israelites and all that, all the family of the chosen, you want to see all that sort of stuff. Get up into that tree. It gets you, get you that bird's eye view of Jesus, right? Uh, so that's what uh, Zacchaeus is trying to do. Um, let me see. Five. When Yeshua came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Hey, Zacchaeus, get your behind out of that tree, man. I need a place to crash tonight. <laughs> he said, I'm serious. <laughs> okay. Zacchaeus hurried down, he hurried on down, came down, and welcomed him joyfully. Oh, Jesus, dude, this is going to be awesome, bro. I'll get a couple of beers, and, uh, and, and I'll get some DVDs, we'll get some videos, and uh, dude, we'll just hang out, bro. We'll hang out, man. It'll be fun. Right? Some Doritos? Some Doritos, man. You know what you like, man. I'll, I'll, I'll have, like, Domino's delivery and stuff. Um, dude, this is awesome, man. Jesus is going to kick it in my place, man. I'm cool now. See, you guys all making fun of me because I'm short and stuff. Jesus think I'm cool. Right. All right, let's see. Now, Zacchaeus hurried home down or here down from the tree, verse 7. But when everyone saw it, they began to grumble, say, Yeshua, must be out your mind, man. Okay, Yeshua has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Okay, so well, now what makes what makes uh, Zacchaeus such a big sinner, which he was, he was a tax collector. Okay? Basically, it's this. Zacchaeus was the New Testament IRS. All right. Yep. You know, it's uh, here's the deal. You know, tax you know, when you're taxing people. OK, because who's he taxing for? He's taxing for a false God. Oh. That's his big sin. These tax collectors. Mm -hmm. All right. They're taxing for the state uh, for the state. They're taking people's income. It's a violation. It's like the, the commandment says thou shall not steal. So when you're going around and you're pulling people's income. OK, you're going out, you're, you're taking what's theirs. And not only are you taking what's theirs, you're using to pay tribute to a false god. Remember what God, what Jesus, when he had that dialogue uh, uh, with the Herodians? He's like, hey, there is, when they're asking him about who to pay tribute to, and Jesus says, uh, let me see that coin. And, and, the, and the liberals like to use that. They like to say, well, Jesus said, render under Caesar what is Caesar's. And you're looking at that all wrong. Jesus wanted them to look at that coin. Why do you think he asked to see that coin? He says, I want you to look at who is on that coin. It'll say, worshipful son of the God Augustus. That's a false God. That's an engraven image of a false God. Isn't that against the commandments? They're violating the commandments. That's what Jesus wanted them to see. So it's not, it wasn't about you know, who's going to pay taxes or what. It's like, look, man, you guys, but while you guys are trying to trap me in this, I got you. Huh. You know, dead to rights. You guys are paying tribute to a false God. So, um. Let me see. Where are we at? Where are we at? That's oh, uh, uh, going on about uh, Zacchaeus and, and his business. So when you're when you're uh, when you're taking the fruits of people's earnings, y'all, that's that's theft. You know, it's and, uh, uh, and today when you have institutionalized theft, when you're taxing people's income, 
Yo, that's 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 trying to justify um, theft. You can't do that. And I know that, you know, it'd be like, well, how are you going to pay for your roads and how are you going to pay for these infrastructure and stuff like that? You pay with it with taxation, according to the original tax model. And in the original tax model in our Constitution, you don't tax people's income. It's not in there because it would be antithetical to the Constitution. It would be a violation of our right to property. Yeah, private property. Okay? So Jesus understands that and these people know that. And ironically enough, you know, this person is seen as evil. <laughs> they recognized him as evil. So what you're doing is evil. You are a great sinner. It was a sin to be a tax collector because you are violating people's right to their property and you're paying tribute to a false god with it. All right. Let's so see. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, Master, half of my possessions I give to the poor. Oh, that's very nice of you. <laughs> and I have some, if I have somehow cheated someone, I repay four times as much. Oh, you are so, you are a jewel, man. Oh, my God. I've never run into somebody as, as nice as you. As okay. pure as you. As pure as you. Okay, now let, let's back this up. This is especially, now, is, is this dude, uh, uh, this dude is a Democrat of his day. <laughs> He's straight up a Democrat of his day. He's thinking that he is so generous. Yeah. He's so generous. But what's he, how is he generous? He's generous with other people's money. <laughs> okay, he takes money from people and is generous with it. He's talking about, and if, and if I have cheated someone, I repay them four times as much. Well, when you do that, that means you're going to tax people four times as much. Do Democrats not do this? Always looking for a reason to, 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 to raise taxes. We need this for this, and, and, oh, and we could do this, and we could do this for the schools, and we could do this for health care, we could do this, and we could do that. Oh, but by the way, before we do that, we're going to jack up your taxes. All right, so yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna justify why I should be able to take from you more. This is fairness to to, to liberals. This is fairness to to the to the godless, to the Democrats. This is fairness to them. Yeah. Fairness to them is being unfair to somebody else. All right, so let's see. It's, hey, don't tell me that the Bible don't read us. <laughs> Democrats don't like this stuff. They want to look at the Jesus who's all about you know uh, taking from the rich and giving to the poor. And Jesus, you know, doesn't. It's like Jesus never told. Jesus didn't roll like that. Read what he says. Yeah, we're about to see where he does the opposite. Yeah, yeah. He's exactly, he's exactly the opposite. He's like, you know, you guys can make an idol. God don't like that. Yeah. You, you better dig God for what he says he is. If you don't dig God for who he says, God's like, I understand. You don't dig me for who I say I am. But, you know, uh, if you don't dig who I am, don't expect, for, you know, I'm not going to make you live in my kingdom eternally because you don't truly dig me. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's see. Then Yeshua said to him, today salvation has come to this home. Because he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. And it's like, look, man, that's very nice of you and everything. But today, today salvation has come. I'm going to set the record straight. Hey, you're a sinner. You're a tax collector. You know, it's like you're kind of like the lowest kind of sinner. But you know what, man? I think there's hope for you. I think there's hope for you. And we're going to sit. We're going we gonna, to uh, we watch some videos. Maybe drink a little wine. You know, have some Doritos, you know, some pizza. But before, <laughs> by, by, by the time I'm done, man, you're going you gonna to be straight. You're going you to understand why it is that being a tax collector and all this, these platitudes that you speak and all this stuff, stuff that you think is so good and so right is why it's wrong. Because what you're talking about, you're, you're trying to give yourself points. You're trying to give yourself merit. And in trying to give yourself merit, you're going to have to do other people dirty to do it, to make yourself look clean. All right. All right. Let's see. As they were listening to this, Yeshua went on to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem. And they supposed that the kingdom of God was about to appear at once. Okay, they're excited, right? Okay, Jesus about to do his thing. And he's, going about, he's about to unveil the kingdom. It's like they're excited, y'all. They're, they're really enthused, but they still haven't grasped that he's God yet. You know, it's, 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 like, it's like it's in there, but it just hasn't embedded. It's, it's, it's just not there. It's still kind of like in the air, even within their heads. Uh, so they're, they're caught up in the enthusiasm, but not just they're just not grounded in it yet. All right. Uh, let's see. As they were listening to this, uh, Yeshua went on to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem. And they supposed that the kingdom of God was about to appear at once. Therefore, he said, a certain nobleman went to a faraway land. To receive for himself a kingdom and then return and calling tens. Remember, I go to prepare a place for you um, and calling ten 
of his own slaves. He gave them 10 minas and said to them, before we go on, okay, let's clear up slavery. Uh, once again, y'all, we're not talking about forced slavery. The Bible already says, if you kidnap somebody, whether you keep them for yourself to enslave them or whether you sell them, that is punishable by death. God does not dig forced slavery. So what kind of slavery are we talking about? We're talking about indentured servitude, bond servants, uh, or paying off a debt, uh, uh, people who would uh, sell themselves into slavery or sell themselves to auctioners because it's like, look, man, I, I, I may not know who to go to. I need you to help me you know, be able to get, because back then, y'all, that, that was kind of like a way to survive. A way to survive was to go into slavery. Um, but or even spoils of war. Now, some would say, well, isn't a spoil of war? Isn't that forced slavery? No, it's not. Even in our Constitution, y'all, does it does it not say nobody can be deprived of life, liberty or a pursuit of ha or a property without due process of law. So if you're found guilty of a crime, you are deprived of your liberty. And when you get put in prison, in prison, you're going to be making license plates. You're going to be making things right. You, you have basically become a slave. But you, you, your freedom was taken away from you because you, uh, you forfeited your rights by intruding on somebody else's. You broke the law. You can't just make somebody say that if they break the law. Yes, you, that, that's where people get into talking about. Uh, well, so people do that because uh, uh, we have a slave system in America uh, uh, with the prison industrial complex. It's like, look, y'all. If you want, if you want to go the prison industrial complex route, you go right ahead. And where are those areas? Where are those people getting incarcerated that have the most crime? Democrats. All right. So, yeah, people are getting probably getting incarcerated. They're getting incarcerated left and right. But, you know, you look at the areas that are run by Democrats. You stop electing these people into power and you help and you help uh, instead of like pandering to them and making them feel like uh, victims and start telling them this, you know, yeah. showing the light to them. They can get freedom. Yes. All right. They're locked up in here. And they can get freedom, and they don't have to do the things that are that have exposed them to uh, 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 them them red and blue lights. All right, that that'll get them locked up. Stop, stop enabling this behavior, y'all. Stop it. Um, so let's see. For himself, the kingdom returns. So, the, oh, oh, anyway, so when we're talking about uh, uh, forced slavery, or we're talking about spoils of war, it's it's not the same thing. When God has uh, a nation, like you know, when He has the Hebrews like ride on a, a, another nation. It's not like God was bored and said, hey, Hebrews, you guys want to have some fun? You want to go kill some people and take them as slaves? God doesn't do that. When, when, when uh, God sends them to ride on another uh, uh, tribe, it's because this tribe itself is just far out wacky wicked. I mean, they're, they're, they're gone and they're, they're a, a full on oppressive culture. They be enslaving people. They be eating people. Uh, they be sacrificing people, sacrificing children to other gods. I mean, these people are sick. Uh, sexual entitlements, bestiality, uh, you know, did I say cannibalism already? Uh, you know, they, they be, they, all this just crazy stuff, stuff that they feel just to, to uh, it's a culture of, of just full on debauchery, hedonism, I mean, and, and oppression. Okay. Even uh, so oppressive where people, uh, uh, even the people who do the oppressing are looking at other tribes and say, wow, these people are sick. God, you need to do, they're even like, God, you need to do something about this. Even like the, 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 the full on nastiest people say, wow, man, you guys are out of your minds. All right. To where God's just like, okay, okay, we got to do something about this. I want you to go put them to the sword. These people are just, they're way too far from me and I cannot let their kingdom spread. You have to, in some cases, they were so bad, God had to have all of them killed. The men, the women, the children, the livestock, scorched earth. Yeah. All of it. Why? Why did God have to do that? Because, let's say, what's he going to do? He's going to kill all the men and leave the women destitute? You know, it's like, to, 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 it's, it's like, because the women are going to get captured, and they're going to get forced into slavery, being or concubines, prostitution. The children, they're going to try to survive. They're going to become wicked people to try to survive. Wow. You know, they may result to more theft. Murder, they grow up. So you can't really, and, and trying to take them as slaves. These people are so far gone in their culture that they, they can't help but maintain a sense of patriotism. So in trying to take them as slaves, the, the women and the children, the children are going to grow up with a sentiment towards the culture they were taking. They're going to be raised with that by their mothers. Do we not see that today in America? When you got people who come here and are still patriots of the nation that they want to come here. They want to leave their country and they want to, it's like they, they have to get out of their country, but they want to come here and turn this country in the place that they just left. Yes. 
Now, I'm not, I'm not being xenophobic. It's like, look, y'all want to come here legally? Let's do it. Yeah. You know, even Leviticus. Leviticus say, hey, welcome the foreigner and treat them as your native born. But what does that mean? That means assimilate. You can't just come here and act any old way that you want to. There are laws that we have here. In order for me to love you as I love myself under this law, I got to love you under that law, which means you got to abide by that law. Amen. All right. So thank you for explaining that. <laughs> so these these are things that, you know, when we're talking about, you know, forced uh, slavery, that's different from being a spoil of war, because also if God, if, if, if this if this tribe wasn't too far gone, yeah, God will say, yeah, go ahead and take them as slaves. I guarantee you the Israelites are going to treat them better than where they were. <laughs> Yeah. And God puts sanctions on that. It's like, this is how you are to treat your slaves. You treat them with dignity. You treat them with kindness. You know, you, if you go on abusing your slave, eye for an eye, two for two. Okay, this is God, God, God's like, you got you to treat your, your slaves fairly. All right. So let's see, let's see. Where are we at? And so just really quick. So there's a distinction between his God's God is uh, just like with Lincoln. Lincoln said, hey, you don't respect the rights of others. You don't deserve freedom for yourself. So God's like, you treat other people like that, you will be ridden on, and you will end up being, uh, as, as, a, as a, a form of retribution, you will be made slaves. I don't just go and enslave innocent, have innocent people enslaved. You enslave people, you do people dirty, you have an oppressive culture, you're going to get enslaved. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, but citizens, did, okay. Um, what are we at? 13. And calling 10 of his own slaves, he gave them 10 minas. Oh, and by the way, he gave his slaves money? Yeah. You, don't, you don't give your property. You know, like when you force somebody into slavery, it's like you don't give them money. You don't invest in them. This, he's making an investment. Yeah. Okay? So, so we're, like I said, we're talking about a totally different kind of slavery here. Uh, instead of them, do business. Oh, do business. What, you mean like private sector business? <laughs> oh, it's because, you know, he's a nobleman. He's got money. So he wants them to do business. And said to them, do business until I come back. But his citizens detested him. And they sent a delegation after him saying, we don't want this fellow to reign over us. So like, you know, when we have even in America, we have um, the consent of the governed. Y'all, you know, as you know, especially, you know, conservatives, a lot of times conservatives, you know, they 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 want uh, they keep saying government is not the answer. Government not, is not the answer. But man, are they ever fanatics over politicians? Yeah. Wow. Right. You know, everything you say, you say something halfway smart. A conservative be like, you should run for office. It's like, dude. <laughs> it's like it's the being a politician is not the answer to everything yeah. using your god-given talents to be of good service that's what makes america great not politicians i'm not you know down on anybody who wants to run for office or anything like that of course we we need a a, a representative government you know to maintain our rights in you know in uh in this republic but it's almost like that's always the answer while saying government is not the answer <laughs> You know, yeah. another politician. It's always throw your hat behind him. Throw your money behind another politician. Throw all your promotional energy behind another politician. Instead of connecting with the culture and saying, look, you know, you, you might want to consider what it is to consent to conservative governance. Amen. You know, it's, that's what we are. And a lot of people don't consent to that. That's why you got people going up nuts out there now. And, it, yeah. It, yeah, and, and maybe it, and right now it's kind of hurting their livelihood. And I hope, I hope the trend continues where it's like these people are they're being shown for how nuts they are. But this shouldn't have taken this long. Yeah. I've been trying to say this for a long time. Say, hey, you know, we are, you know, governed only by our consent. But you got to get the culture to be like to say, OK, I, I, I can handle living under that law. Yeah. I can handle that. They, where, they, where the culture can recognize good law. Too much of the culture doesn't recognize yeah. good law. You keep trying to change it. You can tell that by, by the fact that a lot of people out there think that we live in a democracy. <laughs> yeah. They want a democracy. We're a republic. But they can't handle it. And this is a different kind of republic. Because in this republic, it's actually good law. Yeah. We're ruled by good law based on this. That's what makes our laws so unique. Hey. All right. Uh, when he returned. Drop the mic right there. Bam. <laughs> drop that mic. We don't want to fall. We don't want this fellow to reign over us. When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he called for those slaves to whom he had given the money. He wanted to know how much business they had done. How much business. <laughs> now the first appeared saying, Hey master, your one mina has made ten. The master said to him, Well done, good slave. Because you were faithful with so little, take charge over ten cities. Mm. Also the second slave came saying, Your mina has made five masters. 
Then he said to, his one, to this one, you are likewise over five cities. But another came saying, Master, here's your meaning. I was keeping it safe in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you because you are a strict man. <laughs> All right. So obviously, once again, we're not talking about, you know, like slaves, you know, like, you know, how people think about uh, slavery in America. You know, we're not talking about roots. All right. <laughs> This is this is this is different. So um, now people be talking about, yo man. One thing that bugs me is when people think that it's a virtue to be poor. It's not a virtue to be poor. It's a virtue to recognize that you're poor, and it's a virtue to recognize your dependency on God in your poverty. And we're talking about different kinds of poverty. We're not just talking about uh, 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 finance finances, you know, because rich people can be just as poor. Look at we got we got rich folks. People who got everything, they got money, they got fame, they commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Drunks, mm -hmm. alcoholics, they so empty, they are poor. They are in a serious spiritual, emotional, and mental deficit. Okay? Now, blessed are the poor who recognize their dependency on God. If you're just poor and you don't think that you need God, God's be like, okay, well, you don't need me, but you know, hey, that's, that's you. That's your decision. Okay? You're not going to be blessed. Don't expect blessings from me if you don't want them. All right, you don't want to recognize me. But those who recognize their poverty with God, that's something different. Those are the ones who are blessed, y'all. And what's God going to do? People be like, well, the poor are blessed. What's God going to bless you with more? Poverty? Oh, you are so good. Oh, man, I like you. I like your poor behind. More poverty for you. Oh, man, aren't you happy? You know, aren't you, aren't you so glad that I made you so poor? It's like, you know, no, God's not going to bless you with more poverty. God wants us to be fruitful. Remember? Be fruitful. So this now this cat right here took a meat and made 10. God's like, heck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Fruitful. All right. So he was fruitful. God's letting you know that it's and when people be talking about, you know, God, you know, uh, you're exactly where God wants you. And, and it's like, look, um, God, it, it, don't, trust me, I'm not going to try to say that God's not in control. But it, it, as a person who is in control, he gives instructions. It's like, look, I'm the one in control. I'm the one who knows what's going on. I told you to do this. And you need to get out there and do it. And you need to be fruitful. You got to be careful, y'all, with saying uh, God is in control, y'all, because that kicks the door open to complacency. And you'll just assume that God's just going to do everything. No, God gives us responsibilities. And you're supposed to be fruitful. If you're, if you're, in a, if you're not doing things or, or moving towards doing things with the God-given talents and resources that God gave to you, God's going to have an issue with you. He's going to say it in here. He says, I got a problem with you. If you're doing, if you're moving towards doing something, it's like, you know, you know, who knows, guys, we may go to our graves, uh, uh, not achieving the things that we wanted to achieve, but you got to pursue it. You can't just be like, well, you know, maybe that's not what God wants me to do and God's in control and I'm, maybe I'm exactly where I need to be and stuff like that. Y'all, that can only go so far. You're being complacent and you're making excuses and you're using God as an excuse. That's taking God's name in vain. Don't do that because you're sinning against yourself and you're sinning against God. Don't do that. You can't be complacent like that. God's going to tell you. Hey, um, then he said, uh, where were we at? Uh, so we said, but another came saying, Master, here is your mina. I was keeping it safe in a handkerchief. But I was afraid of you because you are a strict man. You, took, you take what you did not make <laughs> and reap what you did not sow. Oh, I like your nerve. Yeah. He said to him, by the words of your own mouth, I will judge you. Okay, so this cat is going to talk about you're a strict man. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Dude, strict man, he just gave you money up front. He gave one dude some, he gave uh, this dude money. Whatever it was that he gave him, he increased it. He gave another dude some stuff. He increased it. He gave you some stuff. You should have increased it. He was gracious to you up front. He wasn't strict. Amen. You know, we be looking at God like, you know, people try to judge God like he's this mean old tyrant in the Old Testament who just likes to, you know, uh, uh, drown people and murder people and stuff like that. It's like, well, actually, you forget about the God who gave us grace up front. When Adam and Eve were created, they were given the whole universe. The whole universe was their backyard. Immortal paradise. I mean, uh, 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 job security. Yeah. OK, job security, great health benefits. Like I said, their health benefits are way better than Obamacare. Way better. All right, so they was hooked up. Yeah. Eve could get pregnant and it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> 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 Ladies, look what we look, 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 we done missed out on. 
Okay? Because this does not the word say, I will increase. If, if anything, if anything, child rearing was supposed to be a minor discomfort. Like something, okay, you know, I'm about to push something big out of my body, but it wasn't supposed to be like, oh my God, like you're going to, you like, you want to eat your own head. Okay? It wasn't supposed to be like that. Look at all the things that we have passed up. God gave that to us up front, and we ruined it. Okay? So let's not look at God. It's like, God is like, you got one rule, man. And I mean, like I, like I said, y'all, if it's like, you're, you're, this is God. You're, you're talking to God. God gives you some instructions. It's like, dude, I created you. It's like, you, do you know where you came from? You came from nothing. <laughs> right? I took finite material and I made you into something infinite. Mm -hmm. Even with finite material. Right? I mean, with finite material, I still made you into something infinite. Yeah. You could have been immortal. Right? Look at all I gave you. And I'm going to give you one rule. One simple thing. Don't eat from that tree. That's, that's, that's it. Am I asking too much? Considering everything that I give you, I ask you for this one small thing. And if you can't do that one small thing, wouldn't you be ticked off? <laughs> I think you would be because look what, kicked, what got kicked open. The disobedience opened up the flood, floodgates to our knuckleheaded behinds. And look how we do each other. That's, you know, it's, we, we, we're poisoned. And yeah, naturally God's like, okay, well, that fever is going to have to just go ahead and build. That's, that fever's got to break. I'm going to have to let that fever go. Because sometimes, you know, you know, even, even the medical profession, they got to be careful about how they treat fevers. You can't bring the fever down because you, you may, your body may need that fever to kill what's in it. So it's like, well, we can't. We can't. Sometimes you got to let the fever break. And that person's going to be suffering and sweating, dealing with that fever. Got to deal with the fever, y'all. Got to deal with it. So that's what God is doing. So look, man, that, that, fever, that fever's got to break. And then at some point, God's going to hit that flash pasteurization button. <laughs> And the whole the, the whole sin virus is gonna be gone. Yeah. But right now, but why he's like, well, so why doesn't he do it right now? Because there's so many people, it's like, dude, dude, do we just want everybody to just, you know, all the people that could be saved? It's like, God's man, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm, I'm out of mercy. I know it sucks for you, but out of mercy, I don't want to pull that trigger just yet. Yes. I'm trying to get it's like, I don't, do you think I want these people? Like God says, I don't delight in the destruction of the wicked. I want them to see the light and live. So generations are playing out, y'all. It's going after generation and generation of people. They're like, God's like, are you guys going to wake up and see that you can't do it on your own? At some point, you know, the, the, there will be no excuse for you to not see it. And when that, when those excuses run out is when I'll pull the, well, I'll pull the trigger because I'm a just God. I, you guys have to run out of excuses. You have to run out of excuses. And when you do, that's when I'll pull the trigger. All right. Um. So let's see, by the word, now he says, he said to him, by the words of your own mouth, I will judge you, you wicked slave, right there. It's like, y'all, don't make excuses, and don't try to drag God into your excuses to not do things. Things like, well, God's in control, and he has me right where I want to be. God's like, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh -uh. <laughs> I gave you instructions. I gave you, I, got, I gave you a job to do, and you need to do it. You need to try. You may, maybe you won't succeed, but you need to try. But don't be using the excuse that, that uh, I held you back. Yeah. I'm trying, trying to be like, well, you know, uh, God, if I if I do this or if I don't do that, and it's like, no, no, God says this is specifically what I told you to do. I told you to grow. I told you to increase your territory. I told you to do this. Okay? Um, you should know better of, of whether if, if it's if it's godly or not. You know, and that's one thing about and be careful, y'all, because you know, really quick, you know, be careful about what it is that you do when you're calling yourself a Christian you, and you're out there doing your job. And it's hard, y'all, because a lot of times I see people like putting their artistry before the kingdom or they put their career before the kingdom. You know, it's like uh, it's like they'll talk about you know, how they're a Christian on one side of their mouth and just get out there and do work that's, you know, and using a lot of profanity or, or, or you know, taking a lot of liberties, you know, and using vulgarity and stuff like that. It's like, yo, know, that doesn't really bring the Lord glory. You're trying to bring glory to yourself. You know, you're just, you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're a slave to your art where it's like, I'm going to put my artistic expression before, you know, before the word of God. And, uh, you know, it's like, and even for myself, y'all, y'all know I'm, I'm a little, a bit of a knucklehead. You know, I'm a bit of a potty mouth myself. I try to keep it PG-13, you know, but I, I try not to say things that I wouldn't say in front of my grandmama. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's when it takes real creativity to be a little, you know, be a little salty sometimes with your humor, but at the same time, it's still respectful to where it's like, you know, it's it's not so awkward and uncomfortable, yeah. you know, where you just, you have 
total disregard for the fact that there may be kids around and stuff. I see that stuff all the time too, man. It's like people just be cursing and, and uh and saying stuff in front of kids and stuff like that, and saying stuff in front of other people's kids. And I'm like, dude, you know, are you that selfish? Are you are it's like can't you can't if you're gonna be conservative, especially with conservatives, because I see conservatives do this a lot, you know. Or more than I should. I don't want to say it's everybody. It's, like, it's, it's too often. It's like, okay, if you're conservative, well, be conservative with your behavior. Don't just be conservative with your politics. <laughs> yeah. Exercise being a conservative even in, you know, your personal relationships with people. So you're sitting there cursing and stuff like that, you know, in front of other people's kids. It's like, dude, you know, have some respect, you know. Wow. Um, let's see. And where was we at? By the words around now. And thank you for keeping me on track. All right. Uh, read and, and you know that I'm still taking what I did not make and read. It's like, look, we're taking what I didn't make. Fool, I made everything. <laughs> and as far as anything that I gave you, what I gave you is because I worked for it. I had this to give to you in the first place because I worked for it. Mm -hmm. You gonna throw this at me like I take what I didn't make? <laughs> and you need to go talk to that tax collector. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what you need to go do. He's the one who takes what he didn't make. You tell you barking up the wrong tree, Amen. son. All right, let's see. You knew, uh, now I will judge you, you wicked slave. You knew that I am strict, taking what I did not make and reaping what I did not sow? So he's like, as he's asking him the question, he's like, wait a minute. Okay, so you, 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 you made the uh, assumption or you know that I'm strict. Yeah, I'm a shrewd businessman. Yeah, I'm strict. I'm gracious too. You left that part out. Okay, but you knew that I was strict. And, th and then he asked him the question. And you gonna accuse me of taking what I didn't make and reaping what I didn't sow? Oh man. Okay. About to get Godfather on my mind. Uh let's see. Then and if, and if you knew these things, then why didn't you put my money in the bank so that when I came back, I could have collected with interest? You should gotta be out there spreading the gospel, y'all. You got you can't just, you can't be you can't you gotta be a light at the window. It's like, you know, when people, uh, you know, um, I got to say, I got to say this real quick. You know, um, when people say, hey, Zoe, you know, it's it's uh, it's OK that your, your views are low and stuff like that. It's like y'all know that I'm being shadow banned and stuff like that. Y'all, I have an issue with that. I do. I have a problem with my views being low. We're told to be a lamp at the window, not under a basket. Mm -hmm. Our job, my, uh, my, my job is to grow. It's supposed to grow. I'm being prohibited from growing. It's no, I'm not supposed to be content or satisfied with that. It's supposed to bother me. All right. I'm supposed to grow my audience. We're supposed to grow our territory. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to be kept in the closet. I'm not supposed to be kept in the dark. Mm -hmm. So he, God is letting us know, hey, you better get out there and grow. And I can't be making excuses. I'm calling out. This is the problem right here. This is the problem. And I'm trying to push against it. I'm trying to, to, to grab onto the Lord and say, hey, I need to be pulled through this darkness. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys be praying for me. You know, hopefully we we'll be praying for each other. Right. OK, so that when I came back, you should collect it with interest. Then to the bystanders, he said, take the mina from him. Take the mina from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. What? Huh? What? <laughs> maybe maybe it'll make sense if we read some more. That, that's that's odd. <laughs> but they said to him, sir, he has 10 minas. I tell you that everyone who has more shall be given. Wait, what? Not Je I, know, I know Jesus didn't give this parable. Not Jesus. <laughs> but from the one who doesn't have, who does not have, the have-nots. Wait, wait, wait. Did this parable, he just said, to the haves, give more. To the have-nots, to but to the one who doesn't have, even what he does have shall be taken away. Okay. So, liberals who want hippie socialist Jesus... Who want Jesus, who uh, who says to take from the rich, the rich have to give to the poor? Uh-uh, not according to his word. So, in this, it's like, look, if you're poor, and you're making excuses, and you're trying to justify being poor, and you're accusing the rich, and, and, and like there, it's like, but he already has. Like, looking at his stuff, it's like, look, he already has plenty. He already has plenty. He's like, I don't care. I want you to take from this person over here who's not doing anything with his life. I want you to take whatever he, what even little he has, take it. And I want you to give it to the rich person. That's what Jesus says. So, because Jesus ain't going to be hearing that. It's like, no, don't be making them excuses. I ain't trying to hear that. 
Um, and you can see it play out right now because, you know, a lot of times when people are in poverty and they're, and they're, and they're focused on, you know, they're, they're uh, focused on, you know, Wall Street and they're focused on the rich and they're accusing the rich and trying to indict the rich and stuff like that. It's like, okay, while you're doing all that, you're putting all your energy into that. What are you doing? What are you, who are you helping? You ain't helping nobody. You're talking about how these people are so greedy. I bet you they they schedule their charity. They got a schedule of charity. Why why you're not doing anything? So true. Okay, you're not doing nothing. <laughs> talking about how I don't want to make the rich man you know more rich. It's like well, you know, he, he, here's an idea. Uh, if you if you want you, you're gonna have to like start uh, exercising a good work ethic. Jay, if it's like you, I don't expect you to be at that job forever, but you might need to learn something about how it is to like you know do customer service because that's what this person made a business for to satisfy customers. Amen. You might want to learn that and hey, mm-hmm. exercise some humility. But no, it's like people, I ain't no punk. I ain't, it's like no, dude. It's like yeah, actually, you're being a punk right now. Exercise some humility and do your job. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. This is, and then one of the, one of these days, you will be a person of affluence. You will have your own company or your own business or doing your art and stuff like that. Hey, and then people will hate you for being rich. Yes, exactly. All right? And you'll be like, what? What did I do? I just tried to make an honest living. But people are going to accuse you of being dirty somehow. You're filthy rich and you don't care about anybody. You can make a Twilight Zone episode out of this. <laughs> the irony is so thick. All right? So that's what God, that's what Jesus is saying in this parable. I want you to take from that poor person. I want you to get to rich for And people, we, and we do that now. It's like when people are living in poverty and, and they're trying to, it's like, you know, their life sucks and, and they try to do things. And, I, I, and y'all, I'm not judging because I'm the same, I've been the same way. Eh? You try to do things to, to fill the emptiness. You know, it's like you, you, you're buying stuff that you shouldn't buy. You're not saving any money. You're trying to floss, trying to look like a, a bigger person than you are and stuff like that. What are you doing that whole time? The rich is taking your money. You're just giving, they're not taking it, but you're volunteering your money. But the rich are right there to take it. You're just giving it to them. You want to get that nice car so you can look like you got a little something, something, yeah. right? You're going to end up paying like twice as much for that car. You just gave more money to the rich. You, you got sucking in. It's like, hey, you can get into this car. And if you have a job where you make $300 a week or something like that, yeah, you, you're going to go down there and try to get that job. I mean, try to get that car so you can look like I got me a nice new car. I'm trying, trying to look, you know, all cool and stuff while you're poor. <laughs> and you're going, be, you're going to realize, wow, you just paid a whole lot for that car. More than you should have. Yeah. There's gonna be a lot of things, y'all. A lot of it's like people be trying, you know, be going be trying to buy something. You just gonna be giving money to the rich. It's gonna be, it's like, it's like, like st- you know, taking candy away from a baby, all right? Because you ain't got your, it's like you ain't got your head right, yep. all right? So it's like and making excuses and, and, and trying to look cute and stuff like that <laughs> instead of uh, of being a, a you know a good steward of your money, yeah. good, being a good steward of your resources, y'all. And I ain't judging y'all. I, I, same boat, did the same thing. Mm-hmm. And so it's a, it's a lesson I'm trying to learn myself, even still. Yeah, I still want to get better, you know, at being good store, get being a good store of what the Lord gives. And I'm 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 a hard I'm a hard study, y'all. I'm a, I'm a knucklehead. I'm trying to learn, trying. Hey. Why don't you keep trying? Right. Let's see. Then he says, now twenty seven. But those hostile to me, who didn't want me to reign over them, bring them here and execute them before me. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh. This is where people are going to say, yeah, your Bible tells Christians to be basically to be terrorists. Yeah. Your Bible, it's like this is from Jesus himself. Bring the non-believers to me and slaughter them in my presence. Okay, well, here's the thing. Um, and I don't, I don't, now, now one argument is that, you know, Christians be like, well, this is just a parable. It's like, ah, 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 ah. Jesus gives parables as illustrations to instruction. This is an instruction, y'all. Okay? So don't try to don't try to downplay it by saying it's a parable because it's a salvation parable. It's you got to still it's, it's real, no? Because and also guys, when you when you do things like that, you open up for people to say, well, the whole Bible Bible is just a book of, of stories and metaphors and parables and and uh, and uh, analogies. It's like no, no, these these uh, these things happen. You can't just look at the Bible as a book of allegory. Uh, is these it, when Jesus invokes these things? These are things that happen, and these are instructions that He expects us to do. So right here, when He says to bring the non-believers before Me and slaughter them in My presence, like okay, first up, we got to be practical, practical about it. If we're gonna bring people before Jesus and slaughter them, well, Jesus has to make His presence evident. He's got to show up. He's got. He's like maybe got to go to the White House or something like that, take over, say, "Yo, what's up? I'm Jesus." 
all those people who didn't believe me, go ahead and read. Well, is Jesus, has Jesus done that? No. So we, it ain't like we can go around and bring people before Jesus and slaughter them. Yeah. All right? So we know that it can't mean that. All right? But is it still real? Yes, it is. This is, a, this is, a, this is an instruction. Now, does, if, when Jesus says, when he's giving this parable, where the king says uh, that I want you to bring these people to me and slaughter them in my presence, what qualifies these people? Yeah. The, the ones to be slaughtered. Back up. It's, this isn't just non-believers or people who didn't want him to rule. It's not that. Okay? Don't get it twisted and say that, oh, they didn't believe me. So, so bring them to me and slaughter them in my presence. No, 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 no. Let's read it again. But those hostile to me. What's, the, what's that word again? Te ectos. Ecto, ectos. Right? The word breaks down as hatred. Yeah. Those who hated me, warriors. those warriors, you, you have a war bringing hatred to me. All right. So and how is this hatred towards Jesus demonstrated with war, with genocide, genocidal campaigns, rapes, a eh? uh, uh, um, uh, uh, beheadings, setting people on fire, yeah. butchering them with machetes, blowing them up taking kids and sawing them in half in front of their parents, raping women in front of their husbands. That's what this stuff looks like. This isn't just Jesus saying, yeah, uh, go round up some people who didn't believe me. They hurt my feelings and slaughtered my president. No, he's talking about hostile, war-bringing enemies, those who have gone out and have done atrocities to people, those who have butchered people. That's who he's talking about. I want you to bring those perpetrators to me. I am giving you the power to go and get them. Bring them before me and slaughter them in my presence. That's what he's talking about. Don't get it twisted and think that he's just saying, oh, just give me some non-believers and kill them. That's not what he's saying. And also, it's the thing is, y'all, when this, this is, this basically he's giving you this illustration because for those who don't believe, y'all, God's not going to force them to be in his kingdom. It's not going to force him. Is that there's no place else to go. You might as well be slaughtered. But it's a slaughter that you bring on yourself. There's no place else to go. Nobody can create an eternity for you. Nobody else can. Only God can do that. Yeah. And he's not going to be. He's like, what do you want him to do? Make a special exception for you when you hate him? He's like, okay, no, you don't want to be in my kingdom. Yeah. I'm going to make you stay there. There's no, just, just no place else to go. And um, sorry, whether you like it or not, you're immortal now. Mm. He said, we're immortal, guys. All right, we're, we're, we're immortal. So you're either going to be in heaven immortal or in hell immortal. There's no, no, way, no way around it. All right, um, let's see. Then, after saying these things, we're at 28. Yeshua was going on ahead up to Jerusalem. When he got near Bethphage of Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his, his disciples saying, go into the village and, uh, ahead. Now, where's he going? Where's he at? Oh, so where, where are we at? Uh, Bethphage. Bethphage. Let's back up. Bethphage. Uh, <laughs> come on. It's in there somewhere. Bethphage. What is it? <laughs> okay, give me. Give me. What is it? Place Bethphage. Place of young figs. Place of young figs. And Bethany is, wasn't that something? Uh, give me some. <laughs> House of affliction? She or has no. She's not remembering <laughs> you. She has <laughs> It's like those people who can you ever see those people who come at you with like a riddle or something like that and they act like they're just like the most you know say uh their suggest their sagacity is so thick how do you pronounce that suggest whatever uh they're, they're they're just such sages right because they presented you with this riddle you know like uh you know what's the easy riddle it's like you know uh, the, if a rooster lays uh, 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 an egg on top of a roof which doesn't roll it's like come on so you can came up with a better riddle than that I'm just trying to get to the point I'm making it simple so I can get to the point all right and it's like they act like you know. They already knew the answer, and they presented to you, and it's like they knew the answer. They they looked up the answer to it themselves, trying to act like it, you know. And uh, so she 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 got the notes. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Our memory is better than mine. Okay, um, Bethany <laughs> and Bethany, what was that what was that again? House of affliction. How? Or dates. That's it. House of affliction or dates. Okay. At the Mount of Olives. Uh-oh, the Mount of Olives. Let's get excited. Um, he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village. As you enter, you will find a colt tied up and that no one has ever sat on. It's mine. mine. Let nobody sit on it. It's mine. Um, let's see. 
untie it and bring it. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say, the master needs it. What you got to say now? Oh, nothing, man. Go ahead. That's all you brought. All right. Those who were headed out found things, uh, let me see, found things just as he told them. Then he said, then as they were untying the colt, his owner said to him, yo, man, what you doing? Why are you untying that colt? They said, hey, the master needs it. Oh, it's all good, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> then they brought it to Yeshua, threw their cloaks on the colt, and set Yeshua on it. And as he was, and as he went along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. Okay, so now you'll look at other gospels, and um, it's going to have two. It's going to have the mom donkey, yeah. and it's going to have the colt. So now people like you know look at these things as a contradiction. Um, it's not. A, it's not a contradiction, y'all. In this right here, when it called, when it says that it's one colt, it didn't say that there was only one. It's just making reference to the colt. So uh, they they left out a detail. Right? That doesn't mean that they were lying. It doesn't mean it. It's, that's, that's not that's not what's going on. It's not a contradiction. Okay? So and then there's the, the question of uh, well, which donkey was he riding on? Well, he was riding on the colt, but it says that he was riding on them. It's like no, no, that's not what the Bible says. It says that they threw clothes. Right? They were making pattern. They threw them on both. It's probably because it was like, hey, when they get there, oh, you know what? We got to bring both of these donkeys. And uh, well, which one is he going to ride on? It's not like they can send a text message asking us, hey, Jesus, which donkey you want to ride on? It's not like that. They're going to have to, they're going to say, well, uh, just to be safe, man, just to, uh, just in case, we'll put our clothes on both of these donkeys. So when it says that Jesus sat on top of them, he was talking about the clothes. He didn't, they didn't put like one article of clothing on it. It's like, because then it would have been like, yeah, he sat on top of it as in one article of clothing. No, they layered it. Yeah. And it was articles of clothing on there. And it's like he sat on them. He didn't try to ride both donkeys at once or like do a stunt or something like that, you know, riding, you know, both donkeys or anything like that. And it was important that both of the donkeys are because this donkey, the foal, it's, it's like a, it's a yearling. And, some, and uh, donkeys, you know, are, uh, these uh, equine creatures can uh, they can nurse like upwards of a year. So this, this donkey's like a, 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 a less than a year old. And Jesus, you know, he understands that, you know, if I'm going to ride this donkey just to keep it, you know, uh, uh, calm you know, uh, obedient and not too distracting and stuff like that. I'm going to have its mom with it. So he's bringing both the donkeys, all right? Donkey might get hungry. Donkey might want a little something to drink, you know, <laughs> get some milk and stuff like that. Okay, let's keep on easing on down the road. So, but he's not riding both of the donkeys. He's going to ride this spoil. I mean, this foal. And this is this is a, um, uh, a picture of peace, y'all. He's coming. And when Jesus is coming, it's like they need to understand that He's not, they're, they're, remember, they're, they're expecting him to bring a war. And he's making it very apparent to them that I'm coming in peace. He's riding on the foal of a donkey. I mean, a, a week, he's, this donkey is, maybe, I mean, maybe you could ride a donkey in the battle. You know, I, historically, I don't know if people ride donkeys in the battle, but just, just thinking about it, it's like, maybe you can ride a, a full grown donkey. It's not a small creature. It's a donkey, it's a pretty sizable creature. All right. You might be able to ride a donkey in the battle. It might not be the best idea, but maybe people do. But you definitely don't want to ride like a foal, you know, like a year old. I was like, oh, this is just Jesus stands straight up. This is just nurse milking donkey. I'm not ready to ride in the battle. You don't go in the battle with your mama. It's like, come on, mom. You know, you know, we don't we don't do that. You know, maybe it's, when you when when a, uh, if you got a full on like warrior culture or something like that, usually it'd be like, no, you stay here and you cut up that meat that I bring. You know, so something you know, you yeah. may have cultures where the women fight, like Amazons or something like that, but. You know, it's like, yo, I'm going to take my mama into battle. It's like, dude, come on. You know, <laughs> you got this, you know, foal and his, his mother. So Jesus is making it, very, he's making it very clear. I'm coming in peace. Yeah. All right. Humility. This is a peaceful journey right now. When I come back, though, I'm going to be I'm going to be riding on a white horse. Strong. Right. And we, we're going to be like charge. Rough riders for real. Right. Um, and as the other gospel points out, uh, Zechariah 9, 9, mm. John, I think he says, this is to fulfill that he comes, see your you know, Messiah comes to you on a cult. That's right. See, it's, it, it, all this stuff is prophesied, y'all. Yeah. It's prophesied in here. What was I going to say about Zechariah? Uh, 14, 4, splitting the mount of all Ah, ah, okay, yeah, we'll get there in a second. We'll get there in a second. Um, okay, so like I say, y'all, they're, they're waiting for, they want, they, want him, they want him to reveal the kingdom. They still haven't like, quite made the connection that he's God. Yeah. It's like, dude, you want me to reveal the kingdom to you? Uh, that's me. I'm the kingdom. Ain't no place. It's like no place, no matter where you go, how paradisical it is, it ain't the kingdom. It ain't heaven unless I'm there. You're looking at the kingdom right now, but you guys want me to reveal it to you. Like, yeah. um, 
Okay. So the, the master needs of them, they brought it to Yeshua, threw their cloaks on the colt, and Yeshua sat on it. And I think it's also interesting because if you ever look at a donkey, if you look at its back, it has a cross. It's, it's, it has a cross like printed on its back. Okay. So now they've got their cloaks on and stuff. I don't know if Jesus can see the cross, but I'm pretty sure he knows what it looks like because he yeah. made the donkey. And there's a cross on his back. So um, anyway. So when Yeshua came near the slope of the Mount of Olives, people probably get really excited. Oh, man, he's next to the Mount of Olives, y'all. He's next to the Mount of Olives. The whole crowd of disciples began to rejoice. They praised God with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of Adonai. Shalom in heaven and glory in the highest. All right. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But answering... Yeshua said, I tell you that if, if these keep silent, the stones will shout out. All right. So why are they getting so excited, y'all? They're getting excited because Jesus, if they're, they're seeing, so, oh, oh, this is, he's, you know, this is the guy who comes in the name of Adonai. Uh, wait, wait, wait. He's going to the Mount of Olives. When he steps on that Mount of Olives, he, it's going to split. It's like, is he going up? Is he going up to the Mount of Olives? Is he going to step on it? Is it going to split? Is he gonna is, is he gonna split the kingdom? So they're they're getting excited because they think this is what's gonna go down. It's like, no, no, this ain't this ain't it. Because you guys haven't recognized who I am yet. You haven't recognized you want to see the kingdom. You want me to unveil the kingdom. That's that's me. So, but they're getting excited because they're waiting, they're thinking that this is gonna happen. Um, so when we look at let me see, Zacchaeus, I mean uh Zacharias 4, 14, 4. Let's see. What's that saying? In that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which lies to the east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a huge valley. Half of the mountain will move toward the north, and half of it will move to the south. Then you will flee through my mountain valley, because the mountain valley will reach Azel. Yes, and you will flee like you fled from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah and Judah. Y'all basically... When Jesus comes to do this thing, he's going to put his foot in. It's like you do not want Jesus to put foot to your behind. Consider what he can do to a mountain. When Jesus comes to karate kick this mountain. It's going to split from south to north. It's like you do not want Jesus to put his foot in your valley and divide your behind. All right. So it's not a good idea to be on the wrong, the business end of Jesus' foot. Uh, so the crowd was thinking that this is going to He's going to fulfill Zechariah right now. Yep. They, they're getting excited. Um, wow. So some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to him, teach and rebuke your disciples. Because they're, 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 starting, to, they're, they're starting to believe, right? Yeah. Um, they're, uh oh. Oh, man, my friends are jumping up. How am I looking on, uh, just real quick, how am I looking on your uh, you're, site? You're talking a little bit, not much. You're okay. All right, let me try to keep going. I'm almost finished, almost finished. The devil don't want me to get this out. The devil don't want me to get this out. Okay. So as he drew near, uh, rebuke your disciples because they, they don't want the um, they don't want people to, to, to start to believe it's a, yeah. it's a threat to their power, um, and they don't want people to believe this that this could be the Messiah. Um, and he tells them that the stones will shout out. It's like yeah, you know why the stones will shout out because I made people from the dust of the earth. Mm, yeah. All of creation will proclaim it. You can look at you know, look yeah. at all of creation, the creation, the, the all the, uh, the the bodies in heaven proclaim my glory. Yes. You know even every all creation speaks of me. Um, as he drew near and saw Jerusalem, he wept over her saying, if only you had recognized this day, the things that led to Shalom, but now you are hidden. They are hidden from your eyes for the days will come upon you when your enemies will surround you with barricades and hem you in on all sides and they will smash you to the ground, smash you to the ground. Let's see. You and your children within you, and they won't leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. OK, now some would say, well, the temple wall is still there. So I guess this prophecy didn't come to pass. Y'all, the prophecy may not be done. Number one. But also think of it like this. Um, God is smart enough to leave a remnant. So, yeah, I'll leave this there so you can know that that's, this was there. Because you know how people will be trying to dismiss things. The Holocaust never happened. 
Even got the Egyptians to say that the, the exodus never happened. They'll try to tell you these things never happened. So if that wall came down, they would try to use that too. So God's like, okay, I'll leave a portion of that wall standing up. But at the same time, the prophecy may not be done. You think Rome was the only enemies uh, um, uh, uh, Israel had? They're not the only enemies. We got They got enemies now. So it's just like the, you, you may have a whole uh, uh, nations that rise up against Israel and may, they may still finish off that wall. Wow. You know, so it's, it still may happen like that. But there has to be evidence there because people will try to dismiss it. Hmm. All right. Let's see. Then Yeshua entered the temple and began to drive out the merchants, saying to them, my house shall be a house of prayer. I love that people are famous. Like, Jesus, yeah, he went in there and kicked butt and all this. Like, yeah. But Jesus also went in there and announced himself as God. Yeah. It's written, my house. He didn't say it's written my father's house or written God's house. He said, my house. Who are you going to be praying to? You're going to be praying to me. It's my house. Who is it written? It's written about me. Uh, but you have made it into a den of thieves. And he was teaching every day in the temple. The ruling Kohanim and the Torah scholars, even the leaders of the people, were trying to destroy him. But they did not, they could not find a way to do it because all the people were hanging on his words. 